NASA is already training a team to take on the first crewed flight and the first human landing on Mars in history. Currently, four volunteers are participating in a year-long mission to prepare astronauts to explore the Red Planet. They're living in an environment that imitates conditions on Mars, to which they'll fly in 2029. The voyage to the planet will take the astronauts seven months. Notably, in the past, the longest space flights were the lunar expeditions. The flight to Earth's satellite lasts for almost 79 hours. That is around three days only. So far, NASA's been only planning expeditions within the solar system. However, in the future, the agency will send astronauts further away. One day, our technology will enable volunteers to reach the universe's edge. I see you're ready to become one of them. What deadly challenges will you encounter along the way? How far is the universe's edge? And most importantly, what's lying beyond it? Let's assume you have infinite years to live, which you've decided to spend on space exploration. As a NASA volunteer astronaut, you arrive in Florida and go to the John F. Kennedy Space Center. The president shakes hands with you, and a vast crowd cheers, shouting out your name during the launch of the world's first crewed mission to the universe's edge. You receive an infinite fuel supply, and your voyage starts. To begin with, you need to go into outer space. But the problem is that the atmosphere doesn't actually end abruptly, but just becomes thinner and thinner the more you ascend. Scientists have defined its conventional boundary 100 kilometers above sea level. It's called the Kármán line. You'll reach it in just four minutes. But after that, your perception of space and direction will be gradually changing as gravity will be diminishing. The feeling is far from pleasant, as at this very moment, zero gravity is causing muscle atrophy, moving liquids around your body differently, and even changing your bloodstream at the same time. You're lucky you know how to deal with this discomfort from the preparation course. Now you can enjoy a stunningly beautiful view of your home planet from space. What could ruin such a wonderful moment? The pulsing noise in your ears and the crackling of the sensors. You notice that your radiation indicators on your dashboard are rapidly growing. Right now, at the altitude of 4,000 kilometers, you're entering the Van Allen radiation belt. It's an area around Earth that contains high concentrations of charged particles, such as electrons and protons. They form from cosmic radiation coming mainly from the Sun. You break through the danger zone as fast as you can, but there's no time to relax. After another 13,000 kilometers, a second belt, much bigger and more intense, is waiting for you. So you need to accelerate again. Your spacecraft will gradually go further from Earth, passing the orbits of Mars, Jupiter, and the other planets in the solar system. The next margin you are to cross would be the heliosphere, an area of near-solar space. It's quite a long way to go, 18 billion kilometers from Earth. It took Voyager 1 a total of 35 years to do it. The heliosphere is somewhat like a bubble of stellar gas surrounding every star, including our Sun. This bubble is constantly inflated by the solar wind, which extends far beyond Pluto. After the heliosphere, there are interstellar gas, dust, and fluxes of charged particles. The main danger here is that when the solar wind collides with them, it creates a blast, also known as the solar wind shock wave. If it wasn't for the heliosphere, the solar wind, fluxes of charged particles from outer space, would be bombarding Earth permanently, and life would have never appeared on our planet. But now you need to go beyond this protective shell. It's crucial that the onboard cooling system doesn't fail, or you'll burn alive, as the temperature in the border area can reach as high as 7,000 Kelvin. To compare, even on the Sun, it's lower by almost 1,300 Kelvin. By now, you've finally reached interstellar space. It's very dark here. You'll be flying in absolute darkness for near 300 years. And it's much worse than the dangerous challenges you've already been through, because you'll spend all this time alone with your anxious thoughts. 
How many generations of your descendants have been born on Earth? Have people mutated over this period? Have the XX finally released their new album? Suddenly, a strange alien probe-like object unexpectedly emerging in your visual field interrupts your thoughts. This spacecraft is Voyager 2. Launched over 40 years ago, it's still exploring space, registering various objects. Like, for example, this ice comet that's coming right at you. The Oort Cloud, an area of ice asteroids that surrounds our star system, extends beyond the reach of the sun's magnetic field. It has trillions of space objects of various sizes. Some of them are only half as large as the moon, and owing to this, they're classified as dwarf planets. But one kilometer across ice comets left over from the formation of the solar system make a majority here. That's just what you need to chill after the heliosphere's flaming edge. But there's a new danger for your ship. Powerful energy fluxes and magnetic fields raging in the heliosphere could disable the electronics. And after you enter the Oort Cloud, you'll have to maneuver among the comets manually. But if your spacecraft tackles this, you can behold the full picture of the Milky Way. Even though its center is almost 26,000 light years away from Earth, here you can observe 400 billion stunningly beautiful stars. However, the Milky Way is quite full of gamma ray bursts, dust clouds, and most terribly, black holes. They make about a billion here. The most massive of them is in the galaxy's center. It's called Sagittarius A-star. Its mass is estimated to be about 4 million solar masses, which is almost as large as our entire solar system. If you accidentally wander off course and fly past it without even touching its gravitational field, it'll be enough to expose your module to high temperatures and gamma ray radiation. But luckily, the nanobots have finally fixed your navigator, damaged by the comets from the Oort Cloud, and you can adjust your path to avoid the black hole's gravitational field. Now, it won't drag you into the terrifying unknown, turning your spaceship and body into spaghetti. Although some scientists think the black hole could serve as a teleport to the universe's edge, you better still stick to the assigned path unless you want to fail the mission. Besides, you'd have a chance to express yourself in a stressful situation, as once you cross the Milky Way edge, there would be even more problems. On the way to the universe's edge, your trajectory will take you through hundreds of other galaxies. The first one to cross will be our closest neighbor, Andromeda. If you approached it at light speed, you'd only think it took you one year. But your family and friends here on Earth would have to wait over two and a half million years until you reach Andromeda. And as much again until the radio signal comes back to Earth to inform them of your arrival. To put it simply, you'd experience the famous interstellar scene where Matthew McConaughey cries over the years he's lost. But in fact, the challenges you're about to go through are not always related to threats overboard. Sometimes, the danger would be lurking inside you. The thing is, by the time you've reached Andromeda, Earth, this pale blue dot, will be dissolved in the picture of space. You can be the first human in history to experience the agonizing lost in space effect. Psychologists doubt all astronauts can accept the fact that they can't see their home planet. The consequences may vary from ordinary depression and homesickness to full-scale psychosis and even suicide. However, your flight might turn so intense that you just won't have time to see Earth disappear. Since right at this moment, your ship is experiencing turbulence due to passing close by a globular cluster. Scientists believe these are remnants of star systems that Andromeda tore to pieces and absorbed in the past. Yes, you're in the territory of a space cannibal. Approaching the globular cluster can seriously influence your ship's trajectory. So seriously that one of the stars can pull you dangerously close to itself. There are about 13,000 such clusters in Andromeda. Having passed them, you leave the local group of galaxies and enter the Laniakea supercluster. You look out of the porthole and giggle silently. You see, Laniakea is a Hawaiian word meaning immense heaven, 
The reason behind this name is that nobody believed that someone would ever be able to reach it. But don't get too comfortable. Passing it is much more dangerous than crossing the Milky Way or Andromeda. Approximately 100,000 times more dangerous, speaking more precisely. And this is the number of galaxies in the supercluster. Laniakea's size is 520 million light years across. But the most dangerous area here is the active galactic nucleus. Unlike ordinary supermassive black holes, such nuclei make powerful sources of electromagnetic radiation in the universe. Inside it, there's also a black hole that actively absorbs everything around it, forming an accretion disk that releases enormous amounts of energy. These X-ray and gamma-ray bursts are much more dangerous than all of those I've told you about. Highly intensive, they can harm neighboring galaxies, let alone a tiny little spaceship. But even if you manage to avoid their influence, you'll still be very far from your destination. This poses a question. How much longer will it take you to fly to the universe's edge? You've been traveling for a long time, but there's still no sign of it. Heck, is it real or not? And here's another challenge for your psyche. You begin to think your voyage has no destination. Because it might turn out that the universe has no edge. Scientists are still arguing about this, as the part of the universe we can observe thanks to modern technology isn't deemed that big, despite that it's as large as 93 billion light years. But why would scientists think there's something beyond it? Their theories assume that after the Big Bang, the universe began expanding, and yet the process hasn't ceased yet. At the same time, observable data indicate that the universe looks homogeneous at large scales. This means that its qualities and the distribution of matter and energy don't change relative to the direction and location in space. This homogeneity suggests that the universe could even be infinite. Besides, it'll take quite a while before our technologies, no matter how up-to-date and powerful they are, can cover the complete picture of the universe, though it's likely impossible to cover it at all. However, the absence of observable boundaries isn't a problem for most scientists relying on what we already know about space and physics to state that the universe does have an edge. At least, because infinity implies that the universe should be boundless, not only in space, but also in time. In this case, space would contain infinite stars. Our skies wouldn't be star-spangled. And it'd be blindingly bright on Earth around the clock. However, the sky's darkness proves that space hasn't existed forever. Moreover, scientists think that if the universe was unlimited in size, we'd find incredibly long cosmic waves from massive black holes. Jean-Pierre Luminet from the Paris Observatory in France says that NASA's WMAP, a spacecraft for producing relic radiation, has never found abnormally long waves. Which means space is not infinite. But the cosmic wave's role in this controversial matter isn't over yet. Glenn Starkman, a Canadian physicist and professor at Case Western Reserve University, believes he's found a way to use them to define the universe's boundaries, even though they're beyond our visibility range. The researcher claims that cosmic audio waves, which spread in the universe when it was still young, can help us understand its shape. Then we'll know where to look for its edge. If the universe has no shape, it means it's flat, thus infinite. However, if it has some curvature, the universe is closed. Just think of it. Only a few centuries ago, people believed the world was flat because they could only see the horizon and had no possibility to observe our planet's curvature. But new technology helped us see Earth from afar and prove it's round. It could also be the case with the universe. But even now, after you've traveled such a long way, being at an immense distance from Earth, you can still see neither the universe's edge nor curvature. You're probably too small to look at it from the outside. And Glenn Starkman's planned research, which could possibly shed light on the matter, is rather time-consuming. Nevertheless, some researchers are already offering their hypotheses about it. Jan Levin, a theorist from Cambridge University, sees the universe as a donut. It explains why you haven't observed its curvature from your space module. 
You, our planet, and the part of the universe you've already passed are inside this donut. Unable to break through it, we can't access a dimension from which we can look in our three-dimensional universe from the outside. But if the universe is really donut-shaped, wherever you direct your spaceship, it'll eventually return to its starting point. However, all these hypotheses about the universe's shape emerged before Oliver Philcox, a junior fellow at Columbia University, used a supercomputer to create a map of distances between millions of galaxies. This is how he found that the universe can be neither an infinite plane, nor a sphere, or a donut, as it's asymmetric. It means that some force, perhaps in the earliest moments of the universe's existence, made it expand unevenly. This is an absolutely new, unknown type of physics. Such fundamental shifts mean that the universe's edge in another direction could be much closer than the one you've been flying to for so long. Having realized this, you go on your voyage absolutely moody. Gradually, it's becoming unbearably cold on board. Suddenly, your spacecraft hits a kind of transparent wall. Though you can't even call it a wall since it's not solid but jelly-like. You feel like a fly trying to escape from sticky jelly. Awfully cold, you suddenly break through the universe's edge. So, what will you see beyond the edge? There are many hypotheses about it. The first one says that you'll face an absolute void there. In other words, the greatest nothingness. This hypothesis suggests that beyond our universe, there's no matter, space, or time. It's even hard to imagine it. But it might be quite the opposite. As our universe may turn out to be part of the so-called multiverse, then, hundreds of billions of light years away from us, you'll find other universes each having its own physical laws, qualities, content, and evolution principles. It means there can be life that didn't form from water, but something else. Now, a question arises. Why have we never seen those universes then? Most probably, these worlds are so far away that by the time their light reaches Earth, it'll have lost so much energy that we physically won't be able to see it. This is what the hypothesis of parallel universes suggests. It also says that there are many universes and they look like giant bubbles. Each bubble contains a copy of our universe, but subtly different. It includes the same galaxies, stars, and exactly the same planet Earth with the same inhabitants. But every universe has its own peculiarity. Possibly, in one of those universes, people walk backward while the other has been destroyed by an alien civilization. Fortunately, since we can't reach beyond our universe's edge, representatives of the other worlds can't enter ours. Unless the universe's edge lies much closer than we suspected. Stephen Hawking also supported the parallel universe hypothesis and believes space bears their imprints. These are spots where bubbles containing other worlds touch one another. And now take a look at this map of relic radiation in the universe. Based on what we know, the radiation temperature must be approximately equal throughout the cosmos, as the universe, as we remember, is homogeneous. Though scientists can't understand how, considering all of this, the CMB cold spot formed. There, the microwave radiation temperature is 70 microkelvins lower than in surrounding space, where it's 2.7 kelvins. What's strange is there are almost no stars and galaxies in this area. But astronomers who work on deciphering data from Voyager claim that our space probes are constantly receiving some strange signals coming from this spot. Even today, nobody can decipher them or explain how the signals emanate from this dead zone. If this spot is the imprint of a parallel universe, it means the universe's edge can be found there. And it's only 2 billion light years away from Earth. As such, NASA could send people there much sooner to than the actual universe's edge. Would you volunteer for such a mission? Write in the comments.